How would you feel if you worked for years on a novel, an album, or a scientific research article, you poured your heart into it, only to be told that you cannot share the published result because the publisher owns the copyright? How would you feel if the results of a clinical trial for a medicine that could help somebody that you love were not accessible to you because you can't afford the download uh, from the internet? I've been dedicated to the advancement of open access to scientific knowledge most of my professional life. I can testify that the tension among a scientist's desire to put her results in the public domain, the publisher's need to maintain a sustainable business model, and the public's desire and right to access knowledge is not a new thing. But I can also tell you, as a card-carrying capitalist, even an MBA, that it falls to us, the true believers, that confront obstacles to a sustainable model of open access, that this uh, is embraced enthusiastically, not, ju not just by the converted, but by those in the real world. Our job is to convince them. And the collision of interests and the discussion surrounding them is no longer a topic limited to professional scientists and publishers. In the age of citizen science, where anyone with a smartphone can collaborate and participate in studies ranging from protein modeling to species population dynamics anywhere in the world, the discussion involves everyone. On this point, I know I'm preaching to the choir. Each and every one of us in the Wikimania community uh, connects people to information. That engagement, in turn, creates community and builds knowledge. In today's world, there is no reason to limit access to knowledge and every reason to free it. As organizations, PLOS and Wikimedia share a common belief in the self-propagating power of collective knowledge. Both have grown out of communities that recognize the exponential possibilities that internet connectivity provides and see the imperative to exploit the potential for no less than the advantage of humankind. But the basic shared human instinct to do good only works to our advantage as far as it goes. We must simultaneously recognize both who our real end users are and understand how to attract them to participate. Because it's not just the authors whom we ultimately need to convince. At the end of the day, authors will rationally do what they must do to earn appointment, promotion, grants, awards, status, etc. Just as important, we must understand and accommodate the needs and preferences of the people and institutions who are making value judgments about the scientists to determine those same grants, promotion, tenure, etc. Only in this way can we transform good intentions into something larger and more impactful. By increasing access, usability, and uh, discovery of information while maintaining integrity and ensuring appropriate credit and sustainability, we push the boundaries of digital technology to greater collective knowledge. It is, after all, collective knowledge that pushes innovation and transformation. Nowhere has this transformation been more rapid than in the area of digital communication, as you know. The vision of PLOS is to fully realize the benefits of digital technology to transform scientific communication. This transformation will encourage collaboration and accelerate scientific discovery for the benefit of all, regardless of geography or socioeconomic status. In order for the benefit uh, to reach truly everyone, scientific discovery must be free and open. This may sound obvious to us in this community, but in fact, only 12% of publicly funded research in uh, science, technology, and medicine is available in this way. The rest is uh, behind some form of access barrier in our world that usually means a subscription barrier. As an OA publisher, PLOS provides rapid access to original scientific research without those barriers. And not just the research itself, but also real-time access to the data that underlies the research, as well as the dialogue surrounding the research through social media and, and press coverage. 
Articles published in PLOS are supported by peer-reviewed evidence provided in both the research article itself and referenced work within the article. All articles are peer-reviewed before publication and monitored post-publication for impact and influence on the community through article-level metrics. As an information and knowledge aggregator with a global force of engaged citizens, Wikipedia curates existing information from OA organizations such as PLOS to create new content and knowledge. Where Wikipedia says citation required, PLOS is a key contributor of such citations. The science community in which PLOS operates as a publisher and the open source community in which Wikipedia operates as an aggregator are two distinct but complementary parts of an enormous endeavor to make available the vast sum of knowledge uh, of infinite communities of people. In this way, both organizations are pushing digital technologies to distribute knowledge, accelerate discovery, and improve the world. The challenges that remain for PLOS are to get scientifically accurate information out to the public as rapidly as possible in a form that's accessible, usable, actionable, and indeed indispensable. However, access without subscription or embargo barrier is necessary, but it is not sufficient. Technology and enlightened publishing policy must also drive mineability and reusability of data across media. Uh, Daniel Meachin, who's here this week, an active Wikipedian and his group, created the Open Access Media Importer, an automatic tool that crawls scholarly publication databases, uh, including PubMed Central, for supplementary audio and video materials. They upload this content to Wikimedia Commons if they are available under appropriate reuse licenses. This brings rich, peer-reviewed content into Wikipedia, not just from PLOS, but from all OA sources. Conversely, Wikipedia is the eighth largest source of traffic through Crossref's digital object identifier lookup service, covering 65 million journal articles. This reveals how often research articles are referenced in and accessed from Wikipedia pages. Both the Open Access Media Importer and the Crossref Lookup Service are powerful tools that help users find the information they need. Wikipedia offers researchers dynamic content creation and management tools that enable closer collaboration during the research process. These tools are fostering increased motivation for academics to contribute their scholarly, scholarly research to Wikipedia. PLOS is developing new initiatives and models to engage the community in the continuous assessment of published scientific research, which has both great potential to further speed access to research and critically to improve the quality of peer review by transitioning from few reviewers to many. PLOS has a golden opportunity to leverage the work done by Wikipedia in this area in order to advance technology to drive this change. Of course, innovative tools are only part of this picture. Their success depends on community and collaboration. For example, the PLOS Wikipedia Pages project leverages the capability of Wikipedia to expand the reach of research articles and redefine what's published. Authors come to PLOS Computational Biology with content suggestions and together with the PLOS editors produce a trustworthy peer-reviewed article for the journal through an open review process that is also posted to Wikipedia for community updating. There is a mutual benefit to new content. Wikipedia is made more robust through the incorporation of peer-reviewed articles and PLOS authors benefit from the increased reach of their work. PLOS also must consider the path that people take from a web search through Wikipedia into the research literature. PLOS and Wikipedia can work together to help users find scholarly material from Wikipedia entries and to ensure proper citation and linking. Making platforms and systems interoperable will help. This understanding will drive continuous pathways that different communities, researchers, educators, students, funders, policymakers need to find what matters to them. 
To achieve this, open content and open data are critical. PLOS collaborates with Dryad, Figshare, and Crossref to move toward the interoperable systems to store content and make it more accessible, more discoverable, and to ensure fair attribution. PLOS was one of the early OA scientific publishers to take big risks to provide a pathway to unencumbered information flow. We remain determined to rise to our responsibility to innovate and experiment in these areas to ensure not only access, but usability, mineability, transparency, and discovery of open content, and how it leads to collaborations that are good for science and good for the public. The OA principle of immediate and free availability is, gen is a generally recognized value. In contrast, the principle of reuse without restriction is generally not readily obvious to most users. Both of these values are already integral to the wiki community, uh, and they're part of the wiki norms of sharing knowledge. Because of the still modest uptake of OA publishing by the science and medicine communities, PLOS continues to emphasize these values to our community. And the free flow of information is especially critical in biomedicine, where immediate access to research can mean literally the difference between life and death. Just this spring, the UK Public Health Minister undertook an independent review of standardized packaging of tobacco and cited a PLOS medicine paper that systematically dismantled the tobacco industry's misrepresentation of scientific data. Inclusion of this freely available article in the review contributed to the conclusion that if standardized packaging were introduced, it would very likely have a positive long-term impact on human health. In this case, time from article publication to inclusion in the independent review uh, to announcement by the public health minister of new packaging regulations was only 10 days. This speed would never have been possible without the open access imperative of PLOS medicine. Another example that I touched on, on in the panel this morning, in April, the Guinea Minister of Health announced a total of 221 suspected and confirmed cases of Ebola, including at that time 146 deaths. Those numbers have since climbed to about 1,200 recorded uh, cases and nearly 700 deaths. On May 2nd, within five days of receiving a submission on this topic, PLOS Currents published a full peer-reviewed article that offered evidence-based information challenging other published findings that suggested the outbreak in Guinea was caused by a divergent strain of Ebola. This critical information provided evidence that Guinea was likely under siege by the same strain of Ebola that had previously caused outbreaks in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the Republic of the Congo, uh, and Gabon, a conclusion that has since been validated. The speed and availability of this data directly impact the urgent clinical management of this fatal disease in real time. This is a particularly dramatic example, but there are many cases where immediate access to and usability of new scientific information has an impact on human lives. One of my favorite examples of the power of reuse without restriction is the Open Source Malaria Consortium. This is a collective of scientists who harness the network effect in a collaborative, a collaborative approach to cure malaria. One focus of the collective is open source drug discovery using molecules originally discovered by GSK, now available in the public domain. Researchers of various stages of their careers participate in this open forum where all data and ideas are shared and there are no patent barriers. Through crowdsourcing, the Open Source Malaria Consortium has developed more than 100 new compounds for use by clinical and research communities, something made possible only when scientists grant reuse rights to their discoveries. The very creation of PLOS more than 10 years ago by visionaries who saw the value and the necessity of open access publishing was foundational to starting to realize the potential of scientific publishing uh, as well as the business case for sustainability. 
Plas demonstrated the important proof of principle that journals can exist as viable businesses in the open access environment if they provide an innovative and efficient platform and publishing experience for authors and readers. Growth in open access continues as more individuals and society as a whole benefit from the unrestricted exchange of information, and as more publishers join PLOS in demonstrating that OA publishing can be self-sustaining as a business. In fact, between 2008 and 2013, there was a 183% increase in the number of open access journals. PLOS expects that there will be continued growth of open access adoption in response to the convergence of distinct pressures from funders, governments, institutions as they dial up their open access mandates, and from researchers who increasingly demand open access to others' research and that their own research be available to others without barriers. We are in a completely different world, obviously, than when print publishing of scientific research was standard and introduced 300 years ago. Access and usability together with innovation and technology foster online communication, broad dissemination of knowledge, and continuous assessment and improvement to work. Beyond access and usability, publishing technology eliminates many artificial constraints on the communication of science. There are no arbitrary limits on the number of pages or images or the length of an article because there's no postage or paper or mailing costs. PLOS intends to continue to push these anachronistic barriers to expand the definition of what is published, to break free of the PDF and the constraints of the current journal-based approach to publishing. One readily sees the benefits of this expansion when applied to data. To best foster scientific progress, the underlying data from an article must be made freely available for researchers to use except in the very narrow exceptions when uh, it's neither legal nor ethical. Again, as mentioned in the panel this morning, uh, this year PLOS strengthened its data policy to ensure that every author is obliged to provide her data for a paper upon uh, submission for consideration uh, for publication in PLOS. Full availability to quality data allows validation, replication, reinterpretation, new analyses, and inclusion in meta-analyses, and extends the value of research investment. For these reasons, ensuring access to underlying data must be an intrinsic part of the scientific publishing process. Moreover, the continued facilitation, creation, and communication of new types of publishable objects will stimulate the imagination of authors and software developers. Wikipedia has been successful in part because of the massive scale of its contributions and contributors. PLOS hopes to take from Wikipedia's example by developing its own large-scale engaged communities. To further advance this goal, PLOS recently launched an initiative to engage specific scientific communities in neuroscience <clears throat> and synthetic biology and researcher-led informal discussions of published articles and timely issues affecting scientists. Examples include data sharing, research ethics, and funding. This occurs through channels uh, functioning as online communities. These channels offer community-generated content tailored to serve the needs of researchers in these disciplines. Working with community edit editors external to PLOS, these sites publish posts from community contributors on issues and trends in their field. They also showcase significant research articles along with PLOS article-level metrics to showcase both the academic and social impact of articles. ALMs are a step toward addressing the significant weaknesses in publishing, but peer review itself, long considered the sacred coin of the realm, is badly in need of reinvention and improvement to fully exploit <laughs> the new norms provided by digital communication and connectivity. Traditional peer review, largely unchanged in hundreds of years, starts now, when authors submit an article to a publisher like PLOS, it gets assigned to an academic editor, 
and it undergoes a review process. If everything is copacetic, it gets published. But this takes far too long, typically months, occasionally many, many months. So PLOS is also actively developing rapid release of work, both for expert review and to the public. We are also developing new approaches and tools for continuous assessment of that work. We're moving away uh, from a model of static, one-time review of manuscripts to a model of continuous expert assessment that reflects the latest findings and the evolution of ideas over time. Of course, any new methods to evaluate scientific results need to track with the requirements of the researchers who depend upon those results, the legislators and educators who translate those results into policy, institutions that evaluate work for some aspect of career advancement, the ed educators who use those materials in their teaching, clinicians and patients whose healthcare judgment, judgments depend upon these findings, and the public who ultimately funds the majority of this research through taxes. The weaknesses in the current system are not trivial. In fact, they are systematically harmful. As I mentioned, the most obvious weakness in the system today is delay. As I said, months, sometimes years, elapse between the moment when authors are ready to make their work available and the time at which it is publicly shared, creating ever accumulating delays in the progress of research and the realization of the fruits of that research by the public. The opportunity uh, cost of these delays is unacceptable and unnecessary. Faster dissemination of reproducible results is one goal of continuous assessment. Second, Traditional peer review has only a few gatekeepers with a robust assessment system that leverages digital technology. There can be many expert reviewers. By using new research assessment tools, the whole community can participate to refine knowledge indefinitely. Finally, in the current peer review system, the validity and importance of a scientific result are determined at only one point in time before the rest of the scientific community or the public have a chance to see the result. With continuous assessment, the true influence of a piece of work on an entire community is transparent. In short, peer review needs to be timely, continuous, and inclusive. PLOS is committed to this transition. One new approach being developed by PLOS is called open evaluation. This is the broad notion that members of the science community can evaluate one another's work by providing open, structured feedback on published articles, which enables better discovery and measurement of article impact than is allowed by the current practices of publishing systems and journals. PLOS has built a prototype system for open evaluation. We're now working with selected scientific communities to make these pilots available for beta testing. I hasten to acknowledge that PLOS is not the first scientific publisher to realize the need for continuous evaluation. F1000 Research right here in the UK is also taking this path. As we experiment in partnership with the community, we must develop incentives for researchers to engage in ongoing evaluation, in commentary, and in assessment of a published work. Here, PLOS, F1000 Research, and all of us can learn from the Wiki community, a community, a community consistently engaged in continuous evaluation and review of Wikipedia pages on a massive scale. A future exists where research is published without unnecessary delays and review is provided by an engaged community through a robust system of transparent, continuous assessment. A future exists where we expand the definition of what is published. Scientific output will eventually reflect the life cycle of research and include all relevant and substantive underlying information and data, which must be easily accessible and immediately available for reuse. The future is one where the only limits on the scientific imagination are those of our minds. 
Moving science in these new directions will not be easy. It will involve recognizing who our audiences are and correspondingly adopting changes in culture, alterations to academic, scientific, and financial incentive systems, and challenges to long-standing practices to which scientists and institutions and publishers have all become accustomed and which they are resistant to abandon. New models of doing and publishing science must acknowledge the deep experience of contributors, attribute credit appropriately, and retain the benefits and rewards for those contributing original research. PLOS has already proven its ability to drive fundamental change in scientific communication. With a clear vision, sufficient dedication, and creativity and energy to execute that vision, PLOS is positioned to lead scientific publishing in these new and critically important directions. PLOS and Wikimedia share a common goal, an open web where communities come together to create, craft, use, reuse, and advance critical knowledge. PLOS and Wikipedia have come to that from different places and with different communities and bring different perspectives. And jointly, we are challenged to create and provide access to knowledge for the world as a whole, not just for academic researchers and not just for professional scientists, not just for English speakers or residents of North America or Europe, but for every patient, every citizen scientist, every developer, every coder, every policymaker, every voter, farmer, industrialist, parent, child, for every person in the world. PLOS cannot do this alone, nor can Wiki, uh, Wikipedia. But if we continue to be inspired by one another to learn and observe and improve, then we will have advanced towards a truly inclusive and accessible commons for human collaboration and knowledge. Thank you. <laughs>